This is the VSET 10 Plus, one of the most anticipated scooters of 2021. The 10 Plus is the successor to the Zero 10X, a dual motor electric scooter famous for high speed stability and excellent build quality. We'll also show you a couple things we actually like better about the Zero 10X. We're gonna take you through the VSET's brand new build piece by beautiful piece and show you whether the ride quality and performance match up with its stunning good looks. Dual-motor 10-inch tire scooters are the light heavyweight champions of the scooter world. They're such an important category that they often end up representing the entire brand. Sure, there are bigger, faster beast scooters, but like a Ferrari, those are expensive. And the weight of a beast scooter can make it hard to live with on a daily basis. The kind of scooter you really like to hang out with, but maybe not exclusively. To me, the light heavyweights like the VSET 10 Plus are the Porsche 911 of scooters. Manageable enough on weight that you could use them for everyday transportation, but at the same time so fun, half the time you'll end up riding them for no reason at all. These are the scooters that make your daily ride so good you want to put a ring on them. How good? Let's dive into the specs. At $2290, the price of the VSET 10 Plus is at the high end of its class, but the battery spec makes it pretty clear why. At 25.6 amp hours, it's huge, and this isn't even the largest version. All of those watt hours are going to come in handy though, because the motors are now 40% more powerful than the Zero 10X. We kept hearing rumors about the spectacular performance of the VSET 10 Plus, and to be honest, they were a little hard to believe. But now that we've got the data, it turns out that most of the rumors are true. But top speed is not one of them. It has all the top speed you'll ever need, but it's not as fast as you think. With a top speed of 43.3 miles per hour, we never found ourselves wanting for more. But it doesn't match the 49 plus miles per hour that were displayed on the speedometer during the same speed runs. In other words, the Vicet speedometer is very optimistic. The VSET's big battery means you are very unlikely to suffer from range anxiety, even on hour-long rides. We covered 33.6 miles of city riding on the ESG range course before our scooter shut down. That's 28% further than our Zero 10X. The VSET also did a great job in maintaining speed throughout and then delivered a useful but slower two miles once the power really started to fade. Here is one of the rumors that we have been able to confirm. The VSET 10 Plus punches above its weight class in acceleration. With its high torque motors, the 10 Plus matches the Wolf Warrior's impressive 1.9 second sprint to 15 miles per hour. However, it reaches 15 two tenths of a second behind the 10X due to the Zero's lighter weight. With initial acceleration at the default setting, it launches with just a touch of front wheel spin. Bumping it up a notch gave a noticeable but manageable wheel spin at each launch. However, taking initial acceleration to the max caused enough front wheel spin to make it difficult to apply throttle mid-corner. And we only recommend this setting for heavier riders or for straight line acceleration runs. While we've seen that other VSET 10 Plus scooters have arrived with nut brakes, ours came equipped with VSET branded Zoom hydraulic disc brakes. The VSET's tested stopping distance is impressive. Overall brake feel is excellent and exceptionally easy to modulate without locking up. The second rumor we can confirm is that the 10 Plus also punches above its class in the 10% hill climb. It beat the heavyweight Wolf Warrior by a tenth of a second and ties the fastest 60 volt production models. Scooters are evolving so quickly that every six months we have to reevaluate what a good or great stem feels like. And this stem is so good, it's changing our definition again. It gets an A plus plus. The latch mechanism itself is gorgeous, well-constructed, but a little fiddly. It's beefy and adjustable, but we worry that the stainless steel threads of the keeper screw will get cross-threaded into the aluminum stem eventually. Ultimately, it's light years ahead of the 10X, even if the 10X is equipped with the upgraded rugged clamp. Steering stops don't normally get much attention, but the solid clunk of setting the bars at full left when parking feels great and contributes to the overall high quality feel of the scooter. Normally, I'm not a fan of yellow and black, but this gorgeous cockpit might just convert me. 
The pullback handlebars look great and are super comfortable on long rides, but we found that the handlebar folding mechanism won't stay fully tight for more than a couple miles, even after we gummed it up a little with blue Loctite. The looseness isn't really noticeable during the ride, and it's certainly not unsafe, but you may feel it when parking the scooter. The standard size handlebar mount also makes it easy to swap out the bars for mountain bike handlebars if you don't need the portability. The palm support, locking end caps, and ergonomic shape make these grips some of the best ever. This is good because unlike other scooters, you can't really change them. You see, they also contain your turn signal switches, another outstanding first ever feature. They click to let you know you've turned them on, and they self-cancel after 30 blinks. The EY Faux display is easy to use, but seems out of place on such a modern looking scooter. It's also one of the things that got a little worse versus the 10X because it's difficult to read in bright sunlight. When combined with zoom brakes, it also makes your fingers do an awkward 75 degree split to reach the throttle while also covering the brakes. The 10X throttle and brakes, on the other hand, can both be covered with a more comfortable 45 degree split due to the combination of QSS4 throttle and lower profile nut brakes. The NFC key is cool, if a bit gimmicky, and since you're unlikely to leave a scooter this nice outside, it's probably most useful for preventing your siblings or housemates from joyriding your scooter. It comes with several tags of its own, but you can also program it to turn on with a tag from another scooter or your credit card. But our favorite technique of all is just to stick an NFC sticker in your phone case and program your scooter to recognize that. We've heard it can be programmed to open with just a cell phone, but we weren't able to get this to work with an iPhone 11 Pro. For sure, the best looking part of the cockpit are the well-lit buttons for dual motor, sport mode, and the horn. The dual motor button stays pressed in to let you know you're running dual motors. The sport button switches your gear indicator to S and provides two minutes of higher current output. The aluminum housings look great and give the scooter a high-end feel. Wires are beautifully wrapped, exactly the right length, and are plug and play for easy repairs. The deck is one of the prettiest we've ever seen, but could use a little more grip at the edges. It's also distractingly short. At 18 inches from charge ports to tail, usable space is 1.2 inches less than the 10X, and one of the shorter decks found on a scooter with dual motors. This means that anytime you're using max throttle, you'll either have to have your rear foot on the exceptionally nice rear footrest, or be holding onto the handlebars for dear life. But if you like to ride with both feet on the deck 100% of the time, the short deck will take some getting used to. We appreciate that the charge ports were put up top to prevent crash damage, but we would have preferred them pretty much anywhere else. With hydraulic damping out back and spring suspension up front, the overall ride quality is outstanding. The exceptional stability is something you'll notice within one block of stepping on board and continues right up to an indicated 40 miles per hour, if not higher. The rear shock provides enough hydraulic damping to help the scooter feel planted and stable. Overall, suspension is very good and achingly close to great. We're excited about what riders might be able to do with aftermarket shocks. As it is, the ride is very, very good. It feels weird to get excited about a side stand, but this side stand is amazing and fits in with the overall high quality feel of the scooter. When unfolded, it snaps into place with an unmistakable sound, so you know it's down without even looking. Overall fit and finish is stunning. Riding the back to back, the Zero 10X looks and feels like it's from a different decade but then it actually is. With the exception of the throttle, the v 10 Plus has a very cohesive design. You can tell that all of the parts were designed by the same team or possibly the same person, unlike so many other scooters, which look like every part came out of some random bin. At nearly 80 pounds, none of the light heavyweights are ultra portable. The v 10 Plus fails the trunk test, but if your car has a pass-through, you might still be able to make it work. A few upgrades to portability versus the 10X include a better grab handle, a stem to deck latch, and a far less frustrating stem folding mechanism. Be careful when picking it up again though, as the stem to deck latch tends to come loose. The v has noticeable upgrades relative to the 10X in terms of safety, most notably turn signals that are so easy to use, we actually use them. The signals themselves are exceptional. The front deck lights and tail lights each blink 30 times when activated and then self-cancel. They're also clearly visible from the side of the scooter. Overall, this is the best implementation of turn signals we have ever seen on a scooter. The headlights are activated by holding the plus button for three seconds and are more than twice as bright as the headlights on the 10X. The v headlights are low mounted and you can't aim them, but are still suitable for riding at a careful 20 miles per hour at night. 
any faster and you're gonna need to mount an accessory light. Overall pros include excellent build quality, zero stem flex, very good suspension and stability, best turn signals ever, and stunning good looks. Overall cons include short available deck space, poor throttle brake ergonomics, and a dash that's difficult to read in sunlight. The VSET 10 Plus is achingly close to great. The build quality is as good as it gets and on par with Inokim and Dualtron. It's definitely a worthy successor to the Zero 10X, a scooter famous for fit and finish and excellent high-speed stability. In fact, the VSET 10 Plus is enough of an upgrade that not only would I choose it over a Zero 10X, but if I already owned a 10X, i consider selling it and getting one of these. To see one of the other scooters that set the standard for light heavyweight performance, check out our review of the Cabo Mantis Pro. Or if you're interested in the original Beast scooter, click on this review for the Wolf Warrior 11 Plus.